So I did see a, a mashup clip that we're not going to show because I, I thought it was unfair. I will say that yeah. um, only because there was no context provided to the clips. It was, yep. it was just an extract of something that you said yep. t- uh, that 10 years ago. Some of them were literally 10 years ago. Yep. Um, didn't know what year it was. You're a victim of being coerced, and we're going to try to coerce you into conceding you were coerced. Exactly. It's a very interesting scenario. And uh, <laughs> Okay. Which I hope you don't take your foot off the pedal. I hope you push full throttle with, uh, you know, uh, with the rumble. I hope you full on keep going with your content because you're going to evolve. Something's going to happen in your life the next five years. You're going to evolve. You're Something's gonna- wrong or you've reached the wrong conclusion. They know that that's what you actually believe. That's what you think. You'll repeat it. You'll explain it. You're not trying to shut down everyone else who doesn't agree with it. You're happy to talk to them, sit down with them, debate them, whatever it is. And I'm like, I will always respect someone who's like that. Welcome. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I am Jason Whitlock, your host. Happy to everyone. Fantastic show planned for you today. Uh, We're going to go back in on Andrew Tate, as I just previewed, and we're going to do it with a very special guest, uh, the Common Sense Skeptic. He will be audio only, not visual, The Common Sense Skeptic is a YouTube channel that has unearthed, put together a takedown of Andrew Tate, two takedowns, one 30 minutes, the next one an hour, and they promised a third, part three, uh, that will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, They have published over YouTube some takedowns of Andrew Tate that should, in my view, end all discussion about whether Andrew Tate is worthy of the defense and the soft interviews he's been receiving. You guys know I've talked previously where I stand on Tucker Carlson. He's one of the great television journalists of all time. I'm a fan. I'm a supporter. But I do think that Tucker and Uh, Candace Owens and Zuby and Patrick Bet David and everybody else is making a mistake in how they're handling Andrew Tate. And so I'm circling back to this topic once again to try to, because once again, because I think it's important. Just quite frankly, I think it's important. I've seen tweets from Zuby uh, where he's said that... uh, Andrew Tate has positively impacted millions of young boys and blah, blah, blah. And he's he's this force worth defending. I don't see it. And I'm trying to understand what everybody else is seeing that I don't see. Andrew Tate, as I said last week, I believe last Wednesday on the show, everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie. Everything. I said that off of gut instincts, off of watching his interviews with Tucker and Candace Owens, and then doing my own research or looking at the research of others. This man is fits the entire profile of a pimp. And he calls himself a pimp. And he was selling himself as a pimp. And he was teaching young boys how to be pimps. What do you call it? Positively influencing blocks. He had some acronym for the word pimp or or whatever, but Andrew Tate is a lie and a fraud and represents nothing good. Everything that he's doing right now, portraying himself as a victim of the matrix and of the system that wants to shut him down because he's teaching young boys how to be masculine. We should not be falling for this. This is jailhouse religion. This is a man in the crosshairs of the Romanian government. He fled to Romania from the UK because he was in the crosshairs of 
I believe, the London government there, where there were allegations of sexual impropriety with a young woman. And he moved his act to Romania, one of the most corrupt places on the planet. We are going to hopefully put to bed today Andrew Tate and, and the defense. I don't have a problem with people interviewing Andrew Tate, but interviewing him without sufficient pushback, interviewing him without uh, knowledge of just how corrupt and how dishonest he is, that needs to stop. He needs to man up and be interviewed aggressively by someone who's sitting on the information and has the temperament, won't be swayed by his charisma, won't fall for his shtick and gimmick, and be forced to answer some real questions. I have no problem with someone interviewing Andrew Tate. I would actually love the opportunity to end interview Andrew Tate. But I will not be co-signing any of the lies that he tells, and he will be asked some follow-up questions, and he won't be allowed to move the conversation to where he's comfortable to avoid answering the legitimate questions he must answer. I'm so thankful for this group, the Common Sense Skeptic, and, and again, they're coming on audio only because they've done takedowns of Elon Musk, they've done takedowns of, obviously, of Andrew Tate, and they don't want the hassle or the harassment that goes along with taking on powerful people who seem to have allies all across the world and all across the internet. They don't want the hassle of that. So we're gonna interview them audio only, but I am going to play some excerpts from their latest, I, I, the only thing I could guess you could call them is the documentary, and they were released, I believe, in the last three to four to five days. Uh, and they are powerful. I want to play you uh, the first clip, and it was the first, this is, a, there's part one and there's part two. This is from part one of the Common Sense Skeptic, and it's one of the early things that was said in their first documentary, and they, they call it Tate Speech, Matrix of Lies. I want to play this first clip where he basically says, exactly what I was saying, that everything that Andrew Tate says is a lie. One of the first things you have to learn about Andrew Tate is that absolutely everything he tells you is a lie. You can be more generous and call it an exaggeration of the truth, but lie suits far better. Doesn't matter if he's talking about his family, his childhood, his kickboxing career, his self-proclaimed wealth, everything is exaggerated beyond the point of believability including how this receding jawline with hair plugs is continually promoting himself as the epitome of human accomplishment. First off, Andrew Tate's name is not actually Andrew Tate. His birth name, Emery Andrew Tate III, was given him by his African-American father, Emery Tate Jr., a second-tier chess player and former staff sergeant airman in the U.S. military, and his British mother, Eileen, who was a part-time dishwasher. And he was born in late 1986, his brother Tristan in mid-1988. The two parents produced these two partners in crime and a daughter named Janine. Janine, the youngest child, is a lawyer in the U.S. who has very little contact with her older brothers, while the two boys are reportedly inseparable. Obviously, Janine is the smarter of the siblings. Emery Tate III now chooses to go by his middle name, Andrew. His parents divorced in 1997 when little Andy was about 12. His mother returned to England with the children, and when Andrew started making money through his kickboxing career, he decided for his mother she could retire and that he would take care of all of her expenses. So that's just the opening salvo. This man and this YouTube page, YouTube channel, starts picking apart Andrew Tate bone by bone, piece by piece, limb by limb. Start, go, and we'll play this clip of him going into his dad, Andrew Tate's dad, and whether or not he was some sort of grandmaster chess player. Play the clip. 
So when you see tweets like this or hear stories about how Andrew Tate's daddy was a linguistic genius CIA operative, that is a lie told by a seven-year-old boy to his buddies to make his unemployed alcoholic father seem like less of an asshole. The problem is, Andrew still tells the story like it's real. Another lie that little Andy likes to tell about his daddy is that Emery Jr. was a genius grandmaster at chess. My father was a chess grandmaster. I was on track to become a chess grandmaster. So well, I was he, he was a legitimate chess grandmaster. My father was the highest rated black chess player in history. Really? Yeah. It is well documented that while dad was a renowned chess player, a reported trailblazer for African-American players, having won several tournaments over his lifetime, Tate Jr. never exceeded the rank of international master, the second tier, with a max FIDE rating of 2413 in 2006, barely cracking the barrier between master and international master, and 87 points shy of the grandmaster rating that his oldest son likes to credit him with. My father was a chess grandmaster, Again, most likely to swell Andy's own artificial, self-proclaimed intelligence level. Now, as for the other, even more outlandish claim made by Andy about his daddy. My father was the highest rated black chess player in history. Really? Yeah. Emery Tate was not, in fact, the highest rated black chess player in history. That honor belongs to Jamaican-American Maurice Ashley, who was the first black man to achieve grandmaster in a game of chess, receiving that honor in the year 2000. 15 years prior to Emery Jr.'s death. Maurice Ashley knew of Tate, even played him to a draw in the New York Open in 1993, and wrote about Tate after his death. But Ashley rose to Grandmaster in 2000, and Tate took until 2007 to receive his second tier international master ranking. Maurice Ashley was the first black Grandmaster, and three other black men have followed suit, none of them named Tate. Pontus Carlson from Sweden, awarded Grandmaster in 2007, Aman Simotawe from Zambia, awarded in 2009, and Kenny Solomon from South Africa, awarded Grandmaster in 2015. All of these men exceeded Tate's accomplishments in the chess arena during Tate's lifetime. I cannot do justice here on today's show to all the different lies that they picked apart as it relates to Andrew Tate. I'm going to try to do it justice, and we're gonna have uh, one of the producers of this documentary on to further elaborate, but I'm talking about, this is just the beginning of them picking apart everything about Andrew Tate with receipts. Not, you gotta take their word for it, with receipts. I'm going to play this one. This is about a three-minute clip picking apart Andrew Tate's kickboxing career. Watch this. Tate proudly announces that he is a four-time international kickboxing champion. That is his first and only somewhat legitimate claim to fame. But as with everything else Tate-related, even the stats of his kickboxing career are suspect. For example, if you go to Tate's Wikipedia page, you'll see in the right-hand column a kickboxing record of 76 wins, 23 by knockout, and 9 losses. Below that, he has a very average MMA record of 2-1 from fights in 2007 and 2010. So when people describe Tate as an international MMA champion, that is completely false. If you scroll down on that page, you can see a list of the recorded fights that Tate had. There are 31 fights listed here, not 85. There are eight KOs, not 23, and there are eight losses, not nine. And although the platform states, the list is incomplete. Where are those other fights? Who is in charge of the bookkeeping at ISKA that somehow misplaced the result of 54 Andrew Tate fights? The US Chess Federation has the state records from when Tate was five years old. So what gives? Either the list is incomplete, missing about two thirds of the information, or more likely, a lot of those fights are imaginary, just like Tate's chess state championship title. Henry Cejudo had some thoughts on Tate's record after breaking down some of Tate's performances. And today we're gonna be breaking down the one and only Andrew Tate. Going up against Mira Lem Atmati, 2020, 2020. But look at Milim's record, guys. You know, three wins, two losses, 24. Yeah, but th this is what boxing, this is what kickboxing typically tend to do. They typically, they typically do what they do is they pad your record like you wouldn't believe. 
I mean, for this guy to have more than 80 fights, I mean, this is 2020. Yeah, so, okay, so he was 75 and 9 here. So I don't know when is it that he retired, but he shouldn't be fighting a guy that's 3 and 2 or 2 and 3. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous. So this is against Kazmin Lingar. Again, for a guy who's 76 and 9, I mean, he's going up against a guy that has is making his debut. This is what I'm saying, man. A lot. This, this is where you guys, you fans, you people that follow guys that you guys are think are are good fighters. This dude's making his damn debut against a guy that has over 80 farts, which is ridiculous. In other words, this is what you call a tomato can. I mean, he seems like a pretty smart dude, dude, but he also has a padded record. So you can have 80 fights and fight 80 different scrubs. If you put a guy like with Andrew Tate with uh, Jake Paul, I think Jake Paul gets it done pretty fairly quickly. <laughs> Andrew Tate, according to this guy, couldn't beat Jake Paul. Andrew Tate, according to their report, they can't find 30, 40, 50 of his alleged fights. Andrew Tate beating up on tomato cans. Men that look like, yeah, they're in better shape than Jason Whitlock, but did that look like a guy <laughs> that was a serious opponent? And there's, I'm not doing justice. And when we bring on the common sense skeptic, we're gonna go off into the deeper waters of the types of lies and exaggerations that they've told. This is the shallow end of the pool. This is just the little stuff that Andrew Tate has lied or exaggerated about but when people lie about the little stuff, it makes you think they lie about the big stuff. And when someone is being put out there and being act like, hey, we need to defend him because of his amazing impact on young boys. Really? Really? And I just don't get it. I understand uh, Bryson's take last week about what about Donald Trump? And, 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 I guess I understand where he's coming from, but I really don't understand. And, and I understand that Donald Trump is flawed and immoral. But, but Donald Trump is running for president. And what people do when someone's running for president or any political office, they ask, what's in it for me? And if what's in it for them is enough, they will support anybody. They'll support the Clintons who many people think have been involved in murders. They'll support the Obamas, who many people think are closeted LGBTQ off alphabet mafia soldiers. If people think there's something in it for them with a political person, they'll overlook anything because they're like, oh, I'm gonna support Trump because he may put some more Supreme Court justices on who will end abortion. As it relates to Andrew Tate, What's in it for us? I don't, I don't see anything in it for us. And so I'm not going to waste time worrying about whether or not Romania is prosecuting him fairly. And again, if you have enough life experience like I do, Tate's no innocent victim here. They may not be able to prove what they're charging him with in court, but make no mistake about it based on his own words, based on his actions, based on his behavior, based on the way he presents himself, Andrew Tate is a pimp. They may not be able to bust him for it. They may not be able to convict him for it. John Gotti got away with a lot of crimes and they called him the Teflon Don because they couldn't prove things in court. Al Capone got away with all kinds of things and they had to take him down for tax evasion because they couldn't prove the more heinous crimes in court. Criminals are clever. Andrew Tate appears to be clever to, to some degree, but to me, he, he's not that clever. He's just fraudulent. And there's nothing in it for anybody except Andrew Tate. Go to his website, enrich him, make him more popular. Everything leads back to Andrew Tate and what's in it for him. We're going to get into this with the common sense skeptic and go off into the deeper end of the pool, Tate's mafia connections and, and all of that and what it means and what it says about him. 
But we got to stop the nonsense and quit acting like Andrew Tate is important and is somehow a net positive for young men. No, he's not. He's teaching an immoral lifestyle. He's dressed it up here now that he's in the uh, law enforcement crosshairs. He's dressed it up as, oh, I'm just trying to teach young boys how to be masculine. And no, he's not. Go watch the tape. Go watch what comes out of his own mouth. Go, we'll show you what comes out of his own mouth and what he was bragging about and, and selling to young boys. Just because he laced it with, hey, go out and exercise, and just because he laced it with, hey, feminists are wrong, the pimping and the immorality that he was promoting can't be justified cannot be justified and or overlooked. There's no great, he's not after some greater good. He's after enriching himself. Maybe many of you, maybe that's what Trump is all about. But there are many people that believe Trump may be about enriching himself, but he's also about putting Supreme Court justices in place who will end abortion. He's also about protecting Second Amendment rights. He's about, he's, for me, my interest in Trump, and, and I'm no Trump groupie, but my interest in Trump, he's interested in bringing manufacturing jobs back to the United States, and he can make it happen. Andrew Tate has saved no one. He's attempting to save himself and his little brother. Before we go to the common sense skeptic, I want to take care of one of our great new sponsors, Nugenics. Guys, are you ready to boost your testosterone and get your old self back? Our sponsor, Nugenics Total Tees, offering a complimentary bottle when you text 231-231 and enter the keyword fearless. Are you ready? Are you really ready to lose your shape, your muscle, your energy? As men age, we lose free testosterone, the man hormone. We lose that fire. It's harder to feel as alive and as energetic as we used to. It's even harder to stay in shape. Now you can get that old fire back with Nugenics. Want more energy, more power? To fight the negative physical effects of aging, Nugenics Total T Testosterone Booster with Testafin will help you turn back the clock and re-energize your life. It'll help you look and feel like the man you want to be and now get a new complimentary bottle when you text 231231 and enter the keyword fearless. This is the unprecedented formula with science-backed key ingredients to safely maximize your free and total testosterone levels help you increase muscle mass and skyrocket your performance as you age. Nugenics is also the number one doctor recommended testosterone boosting brand. If you're not totally satisfied, Nugenics will refund 100% of your purchase price plus shipping and processing. Now get a complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total Tea when you text 231231 and enter the keyword fearless. Text now and get a bottle of Nugenics Thermo X, our newest and most powerful fat incinerator ever with key ingredients to help you lose fat and get lean and fast absolutely free. That's 231231 and enter the keyword fearless. Text 231231, keyword fearless. Texting enrolls you into reoccurring automated text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Message and data rates may apply. The number one doctor recommended brand by primary care physicians based on independent survey conducted by the IQVIA 2022. I take it myself, I recommend it for you. Don't go anywhere. On the other side of this, we're gonna interview and talk with the man or one of the men that helped put together Tate Speech, A Matrix of Lies. It will open your eyes about the truth about Andrew Tate. Next. It's my obligation or hate discrimination raising up your hands for freedom. And here's what Tate was saying about himself back in the early days. This is why I think I have a bit of a following on Twitter because I have a unique, I have a unique resume. Like there's a whole bunch of guys on Twitter, but not many like world champion kickboxer, pimp, mafia associated criminal. Like I've got all this stuff and it was like, who is this dude? Like surely it can't all be true. Well, it's all true. <laughs> I love that video of Tate getting knocked out. <laughs> and I love playing it with him describing himself as world-class kickboxer and pimp and mafia-associated criminal. This is this man describing himself. This is how he characterized himself in interviews. And we're wondering why law enforcement is looking into him and bringing charges. 
when you're all over the internet bragging about crimes you did or didn't commit. This is like a rapper that does what drill music or whatever and brags about his crime and then, oh my God, I can't believe it. the police are looking into me. Anyway, uh, we're gonna move on to the common sense skeptic. He's one of the producers. I, I, I don't even know his real name, but I'm just calling him the common sense skeptic. He's one of the producers of Tate Speech, Matrix of Lies. It's two parts uh, so far. There's going to be a part three. The first part went into Tate's early life. The second part kind of went into uh, his midlife or what has led up to all of his troubles. They've told me that part three is going to deal specifically with his legal problems and that a lot of this is just gonna focus on how Tate hangs himself with his own words in interviews. Andrew Tate, this is the other reason why I think Andrew Tate's an idiot, is just all the talking, all, all the, 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 the self-snitching he's done on himself and we're running around wondering why all oh, the government's after him unfairly. Just go, they're after him because of what came out of his own mouth. Anyway, without further ado, uh, the Common Sense Skeptic, one of the producers uh, of, of this uh, deal on Andrew Tate, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, the 30-minute the, the, the video is amazing. The 60-minute video is even more amazing. How long have these been in the works? Uh, they've been in the works for about a month. And it's a brand new topic for us, so we pretty much had to start from scratch, like going right back to the beginning. So because we went back to the beginning, we figured we'd take everybody else along from the beginning as well, like going right back to his early days in childhood in America. And so you gathered all, all this information in a month's time. How many of you guys were working on this? Depending on who's available, anywhere from three to six. But um, there, there's a lot of people that contribute when they can, and then I'm the voice of the channel, so. And you guys previously have done a lot of work on Elon Musk. And, and are, are there other targets, or, or is so Elon the, Musk basically your pet project? The, the channel started up in July of 2020. Um, the first topics that we took on were a lot of the, the Starship claims, and then that moved into Tesla claims and Boring Company claims. And then Musk himself, as he was doing various interviews and uh, like TED Talks, that kind of thing. So there's a, a good core of material in the library about Musk, but we've also taken on crypto, and through crypto we took on um, FTX and SBF and Kevin O'Leary. And then there's other uh, more scammier projects like uh, orbiting space hotels with artificial gravity. We've got half a dozen episodes on those types of projects as they come out. Um, we take the videos apart and just expose them to basic common sense and math. And uh, from that, we're able to generate this material that really shows people that you actually had the ability to figure this out on your own, but here's the step-by-step. -step. And if you don't like our numbers, you can plug your numbers into it. And you know, we show all the math on the screen so that the idea is behind the channel is that everybody, if they put their mind to it and they stop just taking everything at face value, the information's out there. You just have to go looking for it. And so is this just a little side pet project for you guys, or are you making money as well? Uh, we're making some money, but you know, enough to keep the beer fridge full kind of thing. You know, we have barbecues every once in a while, and um, this, is, this is a side hustle. This is a hobby for right now. It might eventually turn into a, you know, an income replacement, but at this point, this is just something that we're doing for fun. And, and so why should, we believe you and your research and not think that, hey, someone's paying you guys to take down an Elon Musk or an Andrew Tate. Um, they don't have to believe us. The, the facts are shown up on the screen. You know, we show the articles that we're quoting. We show the math when we're doing, you know, the volume measurements on Starship, for example. Um, in this case with Tate, if, they're, if they don't believe us, they can believe his own words. Like you said, all of this stuff's coming out of his mouth and we're just editing it down to the point where it's a five minute bite instead of a 60 minute segment. 
And if they want to see the 60 minute segment, that's online too. Go find it. So are you, do you have a political, a political bent? Is the common sense skeptic, is it left wing, right wing, conservative, liberal, any of that? Centrist Canadian, we're not even Americans. <laughs> so it, 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 cause some people are like, man, he's taking on Elon Musk and Elon Musk is trying to protect free speech over Twitter. And, and he's taking on Andrew Tate who's trying to uh, protect masculinity, you know, hey, where's your video on Hillary Clinton or some left-wing icon? Now we actually steer clear of politics in general because that's a good way to lose half of your audience. doesn't matter which way you go. So whenever possible, we, we don't have a, a bent to it at all. Um, it's not our fault that some of these guys are on the right. What is your take as you're watching? I, I'm sitting here. These are people I respect. There, there's Tucker Carlson doesn't have any bigger fan or supporter than Jason Whitlock. I, 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 I'll never go back on Fox News after they dismiss Tucker Carlson. But I'm blown away and baffled that he's somewhat lending support or interviewing Andrew Tate and now Tristan Tate in a style that I think is way too soft for the amount of dishonesty that emanates from these guys. And then when I look at Candace Owens and Zuby and Patrick Bet David and others, I, I don't get it why the enthusiastic support of Andrew Tate, what is your reaction to, uh, or what do you think is going on here? Why are so many people somewhat sympathetic to Andrew Tate? For the most part, I think they're all doing themselves an incredible disservice by ignoring the, the past and ignoring the victims and concentrating on what they think is Tate's positive message when his positive message, in quotes, is all recycled nonsense from other people, right? Like if you want a, a good male role model, you can find it elsewhere who has already said these things before Tate's just really good at, returg at regurgitating this stuff in a way that is appealing to the the minor men, right? And the the fact that he's adding uh, like anime girls into his good morning tweet photos, for example, that that's like camel cigarettes, right? They're luring the kids in because they got a, a cartoon figure in there. He's he's able to get into. Uh, the emotions of the younger boys who don't have proper leaders, who don't have a proper male role model in their life, and they're looking for someone who thinks the way that they do or can tell them a better way to, to get up in the morning and be a productive member in society and whatever. But the message is the lure, right? He will eventually try to sell you something. He will try to sell you Hustlers University. He will try to sell you the war room. And because you've followed him down the road so far with that recycled positive message, you're going to be more likely to pay the $49 a month to get into Hustlers University or the $8,000 to get into the war room, which is his secret society. And, and then you're down the wrong path. And we're covering in part three, uh, some instances where uh, girlfriends of uh, boys, you know, ex-girlfriends of boys that followed Tate down this path, where their personality completely changed to the point where they couldn't stay with this person anymore. Because girls in the Andrew Tate land are not people, they're property. And that's just the absolute wrong way to, to go about you know, thinking about anybody, right? And, they, and that's why Tate's in so much trouble now is because he tried to pick up the wrong girls on Instagram. And uh, like some, some of the girls that we've got articles on um, were daughters of Romanian politicians, 16 year olds, who are two years under the statutory rape limit according to US extraterritorial sexual exploitation of children laws, right? A US citizen, which both of the brothers are, cannot have sex with anybody abroad if they're under 18 years old. If they do, they're a child, it's statutory rape. And how many times have you heard 
uh, Tristan, for example, bragging about virgins or bragging about taking the virginity of 17-year-olds. He's self-incriminating, right? So how Candace and, well, Candace Owens is, is a real mystery to me because uh, Ben Shapiro and uh, one of the other fellows from Daily Wire, I forget his name right now, both of them just Michael Knowles. Cracked. There we go. They just cracked on, on Tate. And here's Candace Owen uh, taking the other side of the coin, which is covered in shit. Yeah, I think sometimes uh, we make an effort to be contrarian, to be different, to plant a flag where no one else is planted, and it can go wrong. Uh, and, and that's what I hope is, is happening here, that it's, it's nothing more than that. Uh, you know, I've seen pictures and I saw in her interview where she said her and her husband actually know Andrew Tate and have known Andrew Tate. I, I, you know, I, I'm not going to go down the, the, the speculation, aisle, but, but I just hope it is an attempt to be contrarian. But, but you raise a point that I've tried to make on this show in trying to explain Andrew Tate as a defense tactic because he's so desperate, in my view, has... Uh, cast it, oh, it's the matrix, it's because I stand against masculinity, that's why they're attacking me. And, and I've raised the possibility in previous discussions, I was like, no man, you made yourself a gigantic target by putting out all these videos saying, look at what I'm doing, look at how I'm taking advantage of young girls. And so he's put himself out there as bait for any politician in Romania or someplace else that wants to advance their career. Hey, we're gonna take down this multi-millionaire, possible billionaire sex trafficker who's out exploiting young kids and he's saying it all on tape and, and he's popular and so this could advance my career. Or, and I, I, I raised this possibility specifically and, it, and it's interesting to hear you say it, Perhaps he rec recruited the wrong girl who could be the niece of some powerful political figure, the daughter of some powerful political figure, the next door neighbor of some powerful political figure, and, and their dad or their parents said, hey, we got to put a stop to this guy. He did this to our daughter. He did this to our daughter's boyfriend, and he's bragging about it. It's like real criminals move in silence. I've never seen someone do something this immoral and brag about it constantly and then be like, oh, they're only coming after me because of what I stand for in the masculinity realm. Right. And then you, you add to that the fact that he's bragging about being mafia associated, which I'm pretty sure they're not going to appreciate a whole hell of a lot. And you look at the Las Vegas casinos, like the name of the casinos is Las Vegas in Romania, and how the, the money laundering and the beaten up winners and all the rest of it is known now to the OCCRP. And, you know, the Dorothy brothers, they're, one of them's under arrest, one of them's on uh, international arrest warrant. And these two are connect, they're connected and they have announced their connections to not only the, you know, the Dorothy brothers, but the, the general larger uh, mafia families. Like, who does that? I, I wanna, I, an idiot. I wanna play the clip about their mafia ties, because it's actually one of the few things they talk about that there's actually some legitimacy to. They have mafia ties. Let's play the Tate involved with the mafia clip, and then we'll get your reaction. Just before the Tates were arrested on charges of human trafficking and rape, police raided what prosecutors say is an organized crime group behind the Las Vegas casinos. They raided over 120 people and companies involved in a case of organized crime. According to prosecutors, most of these mobsters were fictitiously hired by the casinos as tech guys to repair the slot machines, but really, they were hired to provide muscle. They hostilely took over the competition's casinos and beat up people who won jackpots at the Las Vegas casinos in order to return the money. The two Dorothy brothers were charged with being part of an organized crime group in November 2022. And recently, Mahajda Dorothy officially became a wanted man in Romania. They issued an arrest warrant for him. He is wanted as the leader of the organized crime group. So yes, the Tates are in the casino business in Romania. And yes, the Tates are in business with organized crime.
Moving into casinos certainly didn't make Tate rich, but it did make him a target for corrupt officials looking for free bribe money. Romania is completely corrupt from head to toe, right? So I have a very, very extensive network in Romania. I, I like to make this very clear. One of the reasons I love living there so much is because I'm at the very top echelon of society. If I need to speak to the prime minister, I can make that happen. <laughs> so the first thought I had when watching that one, and you go on to point out the, I can get the prime minister on the phone, blah, blah, blah. But, but the first thought I thought of was, okay, so there's a mafia guy who they're hunting down who has fled Romanian authorities. If I'm a mafia guy, I try to broker a deal where, offer up Andrew Tate. He can be the big fish. You can get newspaper stories and advance your career, media stories, advance your career by taking down Andrew Tate. We'll give you Andrew Tate, leave us alone. I, 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 Andrew Tate to me feels like a patsy and a pawn and an idiot. That would be exactly our assessment of them as well. You know, anybody who's remotely associated with mafia doesn't tell anybody about it, right? And if it wasn't for the OCCRP investigation where they have the signed contracts between the Tates, um, it's called Talisman Enterprises, and the Dorfte brothers, which are uh, D, what is it, DMS, um, the guys who, who sponsor the uh, MMA fights in Romania, uh, they've got signed contracts with them where they they split proceeds from the casinos 50-50, and some days I guess the only way there are proceeds is if they beat up the, the jackpot winners. So, you know, anybody who's proudly announcing uh, mafia ties can't be at all surprised when he starts being treated like a mafia member by the authorities. It's, <laughs> hey, give me a second. I got to take care of one of our great sponsors here, but I, I, I'm not done yet. There's some other clips I want to play and get your reaction to. Your, your thing, it's fascinating. Matrix of Lies, Tate speech, Matrix of Lies. I'm to go to YouTube, hunt it up, watch the entire thing. I'm just giving you some of the highlights. This thing is amazing. Uh, but I want to tell you what's also amazing, and that's preborn. You guys know what we do here at Fearless. We support preborn because we believe life believes at conception, and we believe we have to tune our mind to understanding that life begins at conception, and that drives our worldview when afterlife comes out of the womb. No one supports life in the womb better than preborn. Preborn provides ultrasounds to expectant mothers who are considering abortion once the woman sees an ultrasound, once she hears the baby's heartbeat, sees an image of the baby in her womb, she is far more likely to choose life, and that's when preborn really steps in and starts providing her the material items, the needs, the support she needs through the first two years of that baby's life outside the womb and inside the womb. Preborn is amazing. It's $28 per ultrasound. You can sponsor five ultrasounds for just $140. I don't care how much you give, whether it's $5, $5,000, 500 whatever. As fearless soldiers, we support preborn because preborn supports life. It supports us. I've had Dan Steiner on the show. I've met him, talked to him myself. You guys know the money you give doesn't go to middle management. It doesn't go for high-priced, mid-level executives. It goes directly for paying for ultrasounds and supporting that woman after she gives birth and through the pregnancy, all you have to do to give, pound 250, say the keyword baby on your phone, pound 250, say the keyword baby, or give the Jason Whitlock way, preborn.com slash Jason. That's preborn.com slash Jason. When you do, send me an email at fearlessblazeshow at gmail.com. Love to hear from you. You tell me about your donation of preborn, it guarantees you a response from me. Love you guys for supporting preborn. Now back to uh, the common sense skeptic, and, and I'm going to tell you the next part of this is very adult, uh, and, and, but we got to get to the truth here as it relates to Andrew Tate. I want to play a clip where you did a masterful job. You guys did a masterful job of explaining why the woman Andrew Tate describes as his bottom bitch his number one webcam girl, 
co-conspirator, uh, I think her name's Vivian, why she would, there, there's a video of her getting beaten by Andrew Tate, and she has said, oh no, that's just us having sex, or that's us doing role play, it's, it's not what you think, I consented, blah, blah, blah. You guys do a marvelous job of explaining why she might be lying, but th this clip, I think in totalities, maybe three minutes, I, I, play, I splice two things back together, back to back about her. Let's play that clip. His big brother stint didn't go so well either. He lasted seven days on the program before a pornographic video of him whipping a woman was leaked to producers, forcing them to give him the boot. Did I say the word listen? Did I say the word listen? Hey, stupid bitch. I didn't say the word listen. Did I say listen? Did I say listen? No. Look at the camera. Did I say listen? No. Did I say listen to you? Did I say it? No. Did I say it? <laughs> Look at the camera. This is what happens you don't listen. Look at the camera. Why are you getting hit? Why are you getting beaten? I'm not listen. No, listen. <laughs> you. Do as I say. Shortly afterwards, this unnamed woman came forward and declared she was the woman in the video and that the act was consensual. Hello everyone, um, I just wanted to say something about the video that's been released recently about me and my ex-boyfriend Andrew Tate. Andrew is my still great friend, what you guys saw on the video, it's just what we used to do, it was just pure game. He's a great guy, he would never hurt anyone. Meet Vivian, also known as Cobra Baby with three wives. Vivian was Andrew Tate's bottom bitch, his recruiter, his groomer, for at least six years, according to this video, where Tate let slip a couple other pieces of information. And I only get away with that because the girl of six years plays along. So Vivian's been with me six years, she's completely head over heels in love with me, she wants kids with me, everything, everything, everything. And we met and we felt whatever, we're in love. But when a new girl comes, she'll go, oh yeah, I started off working for him and you know, it's just how it worked out. She'll super downplay us. When I bring on new girls, I usually pair them with Vivian. Because Vivian's younger, Melissa's like 28, Vivian's like 21. Vivian's younger, she's more fun, more outgoing. Melissa's really quite, not in a bad way, she's more homey. If you were paying attention to this video, you picked up a couple of things. The first is that Vivian was 21 when this video was recorded, and she had been working with Tate for six years. So this 15-year-old was one of the four girls that Tate called together to start up his racket, and obviously was the only one of the four that stayed with him. Another thing you may have picked up was that most of the new girls were partnered with Vivian to get them going. In Epstein terms, Vivian is Andrew's Ghislaine Maxwell, and we all know where she wound up. Which is why it was in Cobra Baby's best interest to come out in defense of Andrew after that video got leaked. Because if Vivian had been questioned about this and told them she was a victim of Tate, which is more likely the truth given the way Tate smacked her around, her involvement as a recruiter would come under scrutiny, which would put her in a tricky legal position given the other accusations that have been leveled against Tate in the meantime. I, I, it's one of the most powerful points in either documentary. It, it, to me, it explains why a lot of these young women may be reluctant to testify against Andrew Tate because it will bring into question the other things they may have done after originally being victims. Did they help recruit other girls? Is it potential for other girls to turn on them? I, I think Andrew Tate and his lawyers have explained to many of these women that implicating him could be implicating them as well. And I think the only way you're gonna figure out what the actual truth of that is, is if they offer the girls immunity, because most of them probably were under the 18-year-old the limit. And you know that, that goes back to the US statutes for extraterritorial sexual, sexual exploitation. Um, but being a victim doesn't excuse you from victimizing the next person. If Vivian was in bed with any of these girls and they were under 18 um, while they were you know, getting them on board to do webcam, um, then she is also a statutory rapist and an international pedophile. And she has to be offered immunity from that if they ever want to get the truth out of her. Here was my other question that, that came to mind when I was 
watching it, the, the, the things that Andrew Tate is getting away with, and, and you may not, or has so far gotten away with, this may not be your area of expertise, but, but for me, Andrew Tate comes off as a goofball. In, yeah. in America, he, he would be considered, among black dudes, kind of goofy. And, and in order to, prepare, to perpetrate all these lies and get away with it, like if we dialed the clock back 25 years ago before the internet, he can't operate in this lane. He can't create all these lies and the illusion of all this wealth. It wouldn't pass the smell test. It's only a possibility because of the advent of social media and you guys did a great job of showcasing all the different social media accounts that he and Tristan control to create the myth of Andrew Tate. I want to play that clip and then get your reaction to what I just said. To give you an idea how much these two brothers in crime love to hear the sound of their own voices and the degree to which they are now using social media to spread their message du jour, Here's a sampling of just the Twitter accounts that Tate's control directly, complete with in-profile links to CobraTate.com, seemingly the largest of their websites. Andrew Tate's primary account now is at CobraTate. At Tate News underscore is the one retweeted by the Tate brothers. It regurgitates everything they post. Then there's at Tate War Plans, at Young Kings Grow, at Uncorrupted Men, at Tate Pledge, at The Real World AI, at HU4 underscore official, at the White Rabbit, at Discover TRW, at Emergency Tate, at Reach TWR, at The War Room TWR, at Masterful Poe, at HU underscore The Real World, at Andrea the Cobra is most likely an alt account, at Morpheus Resist, and at Morpheus Central. In addition to the other Twitter profiles, Tristan Tate has four of his own. The one that was suspended at Lives Talisman, also at Tate the Talisman, at Talis Management, and at Talisman underscore Tate. And in true digital narcissistic fashion, the brothers' dozens of Twitter profiles point to more than a dozen vanity and subscription websites CobraTate.com, FreeTate.com, WarPlans.ag, which now directs back to CobraTate.com, HustlersUniversity.ag, TheWarRoom.ag, JoinTheRealWorld.com, TatePledge.com, their BS charity website, EscapeWhileYouCan.com, connected to Morpheus Central's Twitter account, JoinTRWGlobal.com, DiscoverTRW.com, and TopG.com. Between their Rumble and their YouTube accounts, almost every move the Tate brothers make is video documented. Their main YouTube channels are Tate Stories and Tate Confidential, on Rumble, their primary account is Tate Speech by Andrew Tate. And of course, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of other accounts that rebroadcast the content that Tate's put out. So, Andrew Tate portrays himself as Morpheus, the enemy of the Matrix. I watch your documentary, and my read on Tate is he's one of the biggest benefactors of the Matrix. He's, he's their shining example of what the Matrix can do with anybody willing to be dishonest. Absolutely. Yeah, he's, he's flooding social media. Like you said, he doesn't exist in an in a atmosphere that doesn't have social media. You know, it's not only flooding Twitter with the profiles and flooding the web with all these different websites. He's using the profiles and the websites to project himself as someone who has unlimited wealth and therefore someone you need to follow when all of the wealth that he's portraying is actually rented. So uh, it, it really comes down to, would you follow this guy if he had no money? And I think 99% of people wouldn't. And you'd have to be a pretty lost soul to be in that other 1%. One thing you argued at the end of part two was that your calculation and the Romanian government's calculation is that Andrew Tate and his brother Tristan combined might have a net worth of $10 million. 
combined. And and that I was like, hmm, just five million apiece. And 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 I was skeptical. And then, <laughs> and then when you guys walked us through the compound that they live in and all the details on that, I was like, these guys may be right. I mean, who lives like this if they're worth $30 million or $40 million? Who lives like this? Let's play the clip of them exposing the compound and, and what the worth and the value of the compound really is. Let's take a look at the infamous Tate compound, which some refer to as his mansion, when it's actually a renovated warehouse at the end of a dead end street in a rundown end of town across the swamp from the airport. Mosquitoes there must be a lot of fun in the summertime. Another handy neighborhood amenity is the local graveyard, about two blocks away, that you have to pass every time you visit the incarcerated Tates. The walled compound you're used to seeing in every Tate video of late is much smaller than you'd think, owing in large part to the camera angles that the videos are shot in. The compound lot itself measures roughly 110 feet deep by 230 feet of footage, where the length of the property is right on the road. Total square footage of the walled compound is around 23,600 square feet, half an acre, just under a quarter hectare. Adjacent this lot is another overgrown lot, which might be part of the property, or it might be another lot that hasn't been built on yet. Either way, it's overgrown and it looks like shit. The largest building, the black one with the red neon entrance, measures about 60 feet by 120 feet, so a footprint of under 7,100 square feet, about 650 square meters. Not exactly what people think of when they think mansion. And judging from their decor choices, they tried really hard to single-handedly make black paint dye a rare commodity in Romania. Most of the walls in most of the rooms, especially on the main level, are dark as caves, with red neon strips to give the whole place a feeling somewhere between a strip club and a Bond villain lair. According to multiple sources and news reports, the walled compound that Tate and his sidekick were holed up in was only worth between $600,000 and $700,000, described by the Guardian as being less Hollywood hideaway and more rundown meat factory. Yet, according to other sites like this one, the Tates reportedly spent $30 million on renovating this compound. And this is either complete bullshit, or these two idiots are the stupidest landowners in Romania. Because you know what they could have bought for less than $30 million US in Bucharest? Here's a couple examples. They could have bought this 78 room hotel in Mataya Mio for 3.8 million US, or the 14,000 square meter, 166 room Hotel Central in Playas de Republici for $6.5 million. Those are just two of the multi-room commercial options available in the area. One of the most expensive residential properties is this one located at number nine, Tudor Arghizi Street in Bucharest, the Maurice Blanc Palace. The 50 room mansion alone is significantly larger than the lot the Tates own. And since they love walled compounds so much, this pick would have been perfect for them, as it was the former home of the U.S. Embassy for 70 years and is surrounded by high spiked fences. Price on this property is under 5 million U.S. So if these two morons actually spent $30 million on renovating a beat up warehouse in the deserted swampy end of town into the black neon dungeon they're currently forced to occupy, they truly are some of the dumbest criminals in Romania. And that's saying something. Any chance that they have another place in Romania or they've just dispersed their money in other countries and they got an offshore account in Singapore or someplace? Any chance that they're worth well more than $10 million combined? Well, what the Romanians did when they seized the assets of the two Tate brothers is not only did they seize the cars and the expensive watches and the 20 Bitcoin that they held between them, but they also seized 15 properties. But they those 15 properties have a combined value of $2 million. So you add this on top of it, maybe you're up to $3 million. You add the 20 Bitcoin onto it, now you're at 3.4. The watches apparently are worth a couple mil. Um, the cars, Tate says, he doesn't own them. So um, they're not part of his net worth. Uh, you know, he, he goes in, in another clip that we did where he's explaining that he actually doesn't own any of them, that, they, that there's a, a trust in Singapore that might have a percentage of a company in Dubai where he has access to these cars. 
including the Bugatti that he's so proud of flaunting off. He doesn't own that car. You know, it's a $5 million car that would have, would have bumped up their net worth significantly, it would have given him another 50%, but he doesn't own it. And he tells people that, and all we did was find that information out and find that clip and share it. So I'd like for you to, as much as you're willing, preview for us part three and and tell us give us some insight into and i haven't been all that interested in debating guilt or innocence in the criminal case i'm not going to read the court documents i don't think i will understand them i don't think you can read court documents and determine guilt or innocence you got to let a trial play out but what what do you think happens in the criminal court case I think they would have been smart to take a deal early on. I think the longer they fight it, the more time they're looking at. And part three is going to go into what the charges actually are, because what the Tates are telling people the charges are is not what the charges are. Um, you know, and for example, a uh, month ago in June, so a month and a half ago, uh, they got called back into DICOT to go through a reassessment of charges and the the rape charges were combined into uh, what's called uh, rape in a continuous form, which is a more uh, severe crime and more severe punishment. But because the five or six charges got uh, reduced to one worse chart, uh, charge, they were telling their, their followers, oh, look at all these charges that got dropped. No, they didn't get dropped. They got combined and you're, you know, you're giving people bad information on this. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through what the charges actually are, then we're going to go back through the clips and we're going to get all the self-snitching that we can find, and we're going to make the prosecutor's job really, really easy. That is the goal of part three. <laughs> and so when I've seen Tucker, I've seen Candace, you know, like they're saying this is human trafficking, but you know, how is it human trafficking? Are they being charged with human sex trafficking? And, and what do you think of their explanation of, hey, we're not human sex traffickers and there's no evidence of that. What game are they playing there? I don't know why they're, they're trying to uh, obfuscate what sex trafficking is. The UN actually has a, a three frame guideline that we're gonna use that shows uh, the three stages of human trafficking and the, the lover boy method, which Tate brags about, you know, my job was to find girls, make them fall in love with me, then get them on webcam, then take most of their money. It is self snitching. And I mean, these clips are everywhere, including in material that he's sold, right? It, it, that blue sweater clip where he's explaining to people exactly how to be an online sex trafficker, porn pimp, you know, it, it's all in there. So he can't, uh, he can't feign ignorance on this, and ignorance of the law is no excuse for breaking it anyway. Then if they go back and they uh, check out the ages of the girls who are online, like there's nothing wrong with cam work if you're free to do, you know, free to come and go, you know, you're, you're collecting the money, whatever. Maybe you pay a studio a fee for, you know, their lighting and their sound and their microphones, whatever, right? If girls want to do that to themselves, for themselves, that's up to them. But if you're lured in with false promises and you're taken out of country for those promises, and especially if you're under 18, then the person who has lured you and abused you and raped you, if you had sex with somebody under 18 abroad, that's just statutory rape according to the US statutes, then you cannot feign ignorance of the law in any regard like they're doing, right? They're, they're hurting themselves every time they open their mouths. And I actually think that the prosecutors kept them under house arrest for as long as they could, because the longer that these two clowns were locked in their compound, the more they mouthed off and the, the more they let slip information that their lawyers are probably like, oh, Christ, did he actually say that, right? Like he's making his lawyers work, which is why he's gone through two or three legal teams. Now his Romanian lawyer gave up on him. So he's dealing with these scumbags out of the US now. The plea deal, and again, not that you would know, but, but what kind of plea deal do you think they could have struck? I know you'd be speculating, but... Oh, yeah, no, I've what, got what, absolutely no idea what that would look like. 
Um, I would expect a forfeiture of assets uh, would play into that because those are proceeds from an ongoing criminal activity, um, a reduced time. But I don't like they, they're never going to get down to a slap on a wrist on this. You know, and, and they're definitely not and, going to be found innocent as far as we can tell or as far as, you know, like there, there's other actual lawyers on YouTube now that are breaking down all of this. There's a guy named Bruce, forget his last name, but he's doing an amazing job of, uh, you know, every time they say something, he's like, no, this isn't, th that's not how the law works, right? You're burying yourself and you should just shut up. But he's not going to because if he shuts up, he's got no social media presence anymore. And that's how he's making his money. That people have to realize, and we'll go back to um, why this guy's popular. He's popular because you think he's rich. And the reason why he's rich isn't because he's built something. It's not because he's uh, you know, the smartest man on the planet like he claims he is. The only reason why he has a dime in his pocket is because somebody else gave him that dime. He hasn't built anything. He hasn't uh, contributed anything. He's not a useful member of society in general. So looking at him as an example of somebody who is a good man is completely flawed thinking, and you need better role models in your life. And, and so by pushing this to the limit, how much time in prison are they risking? Can you speculate on that? Um, it's reported that they're looking at 30 years. And that's just on these charges. That doesn't go to the money laundering that they're being investigated for through the casinos. And there's a new set of charges coming down the pipe. I don't know if it's going to be attached to this case or another case, but they're, the four of them, the same four people, um, are now being investigated for trafficking minors. And, and just finally, the people that are saying, hey, he got released from house arrest, it, they don't understand the, the difference case between. Is weak. Yeah, they don't understand the difference between house arrest and judicial control. Uh, judicial control is just out on bail. They've got to sign in on alternating days at the local police station. They can't leave Bucharest or the county uh, Ilfov, I think is the name of the county. Um, it's a very small piece of Romania. Tristan's telling people he's a free man. Andrew's telling people that you know he's got to stay in Romania, which is true, but on the Venn diagram, it's a very small portion of Romania. So he's allowed to go out for dinner, but he's not allowed to cross the, the county line. And all the charges are proceeding as normal. Common sense. Uh, thank you for the common sense. Thank you for uh, the two docs. Can't wait for part three. Uh, thank you for making time for us today. Thanks very much for having me on and uh, giving the channel uh, a little bit of a, a shout out there. That's great. Oh, please. I'm telling you, we've only scratched the surface. Go watch these for yourself. They will blow your mind. We're actually going to end uh, this by I want to play one final clip because there's some of you. Well, this is all in the past and, you know, he's a changed man and it's not that bad. I, I want you to listen to Andrew Tate in his own words, describe how he rips off people. We'll play this, we'll play tomorrow, and then we'll see you tomorrow. Me and these two chicks, we, start, we just start hammering the webcam game. The women who were on stream were beautiful, but they didn't have a clue. That confirms what Tate said in the previous video, but he continues on. Here's the degree to which Tate and his on-screen sirens milked their Johns dry without remorse. So what the girls would do is they promise meetings and here's, maybe this is a bit bad. Here's where the famous would start. Because they'd get some guy, fall in love, that uh, they'd arrange <laughs> for the internet. Waiting for the countdown, coming off the breakdown, standing in line for freedom. Looking for a breakout, feeling like a standoff, nothing in life like freedom. Came like a fighter, striking like a ladder, making all this moves for freedom. I want Negotiation, my sister, no relation. We all just wanna have freedom. Sitting on a corner, never been alone. I'm breaking my back for freedom. Bless, we are living, get back. We are receiving, all receiving. We all wanna be free. We want.